Hello, my name's James and welcome to this Trade Radiators video. Really simple little video we've got today. You may have remembered a couple of weeks ago we did a video about dual fuel tower radiators and so happens we've got a lovely little job just here where we can actually show you in situ and on a proper installation how you can actually install them. What we've done so far is there used to be just a tower rail standalone with just an element in it and we've taken that one out. So now we've got this lovely trade radiators rad to go in as well. We've just got to alter the old bracket so it can take our new rad. And also remember before we do that, we're gonna actually have to put in the new element as well. So we're gonna do that now. Very quickly before we continue, I'll just show you the work we've done so far so we can actually get this so it's on the heating system because that's what this customer wants. They want this radiator to be nice, new, shiny with a higher heat output like all the trade radiators, towel rails. And then also they want it to be off the heating system and off the electric, so it's dual fuel. So that's what we're gonna do now. Have a quick look at what we've done already. So we've drained the heating system down already and this is the radiator we've chosen to tee off because number one, just next door there, we've got the kitchen with all the kickboards under there as well so we can hide any pipe work under those kickboards. And also this radiator is pretty much the one that's nearest to what we've got to get to. The room where we're putting in this small little radiator is just over there. So what we've done, we've drained the heating system out. As you can see, I've teed into these two pipes already and gone through the wall. Those two pipes just pop down under those kickboards just there and there. We've run those pipes along our kickboards just under here. And then if we just have a quick look under here. So our pipes run under those kickboards just like that, through the wall there, and then out under here. So there is where our radiator is going. This is where our radiator is going here. We've got our pipes to there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring them out in nice copper so that it looks nice as it comes out from under that kickboard. But that's the great thing about flexible pipe. It makes these sorts of jobs sort of doable. It makes the possibilities a lot more. So what we're gonna do firstly is mark up and get our radiator brackets on. Obviously the great thing about these is you can adjust how far out your uh, tower rail wants to be. So we're very lucky here. All you need to do is get it to where you want it to be and then you've got a small little screw that just pops under here like so. And the really good thing about these is you can do it now rather than having to worry about it after you put the radiator up. It can be a real hassle. And you're probably noticing we're only putting three in purely on the stipulation of the customer here. So the next thing we want to do, uh, it's a very good idea that you get your element screwed in and the manifold on your radiator before you put the radiator on the wall. Purely because obviously the element is quite long and you, if you've got it on the wall already, you're not going to be able to get it in there, are you? So what we're going to do is, I'm going to pop my element. As you can see, I just slide all the way in. I've popped a little bit of seal on there, but there's already a rubber seal on the manifold itself. So really it's just a matter of twisting it in do not use the body of this to twist it in. Grab yourself a set of grips, tighten that up, and get it so it's pointing the right direction that you want it in. So like I say, these got a little rubber O-ring on them. So this should just go in nice and easily. And then seal up nicely on the rubber O-ring. But if you're worried, just get yourself a little bit of PTFE as well, and just use that PTFE to make a proper watertight seal, which should be fine with what we've got here. Right, what we're wanting to do as well is we need to pop the insert on for the actual radiator. Now, like I've said before, sometimes the inserts need a hex key. Fortunately, obviously, because I do this all the time, plumbing and all that sort of stuff, I've got a hex key on board, you might have to get one. It's slightly larger than a 10 mil, which is usually what most hex key sets go up to. So you need something, well, I mean, really, getting something like this is probably a bit overkill, um, because I do it all the time, it's quite handy. I'm just gonna pop a straight valve on here. I'm just gonna do it up lightly for now, because we're just gonna use this so we know exactly what we're piping up to in a minute got that on there and then all I need to do is pop the insert for a standard radiator fitting in this side these are standard lock shields on here so it doesn't matter which way around the flow and return is but do make sure you know which way around it is if you've got a non-universal radiator valve um, otherwise sometimes you get them the wrong way around and it won't flow through the radiator or make a horrible noise so there we go we've got them both pointing at each other nicely so now I can hang this radiator on the wall and we can think about actually piping it up and making it look nice. Okay. 
Bye. Bye. So now that we've got our radiator hung on the wall and we've got all our manifold in and everything and we're happy to move on, what I'm going to do now is cut the wire back for our element but I'm not going to wire it in yet until we've done our copper pipe work and got all of this lot running because obviously if we've got a leak we have to take it all out, it's just another little thing we've got to do. So now what I'm going to do is pipe up this beast so it looks a little bit more like this. So there we go, we've got our lovely new radiator on here. It's absolutely blazing hot at the moment. It's running off the heating. We've also got our lovely dual fuel element, uh, as you can see the pipe works in. When it comes to doing pipe work on radiators, I mean, it always comes down to a little bit of artistic license and all that as well. It's hard when you're trying to think about and visualize how you're gonna pipe a radiator up. But it's good to know, especially from your perspective, that if you do have a room, you think maybe I can't get a radiator in. Sometimes it helps just to call a plumber up, get them over there to have a quick look, and they'll give you the options as well as to what to do. So yeah, really pleased with this. The customer's really happy. Compared to the old radiator that we had in here, this one's got the 22 mil bars on them. So it's great because it's the same size radiator dimensionally when it comes to height and width but it actually gives out miles more BTU than the old radiator that was in here. And also it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'm really pleased with how this job's gone. If you need any more help, please visit our website at traderadiators.com. And thanks ever so much for watching. Bye-bye.